So today, welcome to Blackout Pod, Benjamin's Benders Tales from our bottom of the quarantine diaries. I have a guest. He was seen on NBC's Bring the Funny. He's been on Conan. He's a dashing young man. Look at you. You're still keeping your style, Mr. Michael Trying Longfellow. To. Thank you so much for being here, dude. Dude, of course. Thank you for having me. Thanks for my first gig in weeks. Yeah. Do you like my pose? I just realized I was sitting oddly sexually towards you, and I. That's okay. Do you like mine? Is mine good? I'm yeah. Sitting at a wall. No. I'm sitting it's... in a corner in my room. Dude, you look great. I never would sit in otherwise. You look Thank great. You. you always look like you're gonna deliver milk to to like an older woman and then fuck her. Like that's wow. What yeah. <laughs> that's what you look like to me. I have gotten that. I have gotten that a few times. Yeah. It's. Uh... I wish I could pull off that look. I um, I can't. Yeah. Uh, how you been doing? Uh, hor- horrible. What do you you know? Really? Uh, no, I'm fine. I uh, you know, relatively. Sure. It's all, it's all. We're all doing the same. Gal Gadot said it best. We're in this together, and we'll get through this together. I started. I'm uh, Oh, go ahead. I don't know. I'm at my dad's house. Oh, where? Arizona. Oh shit! So you skipped town. Fled. Oh, yeah, wow. I fled to the West. I didn't want to be in my apartment in L.A. Are you in L.A.? I'm in L.A., yeah. Yeah. It's me and my Same. girlfriend, though. We got a puppy, too. So it's me and my girlfriend, too. Oh, shit. And, uh, dude, congrats on the puppy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It was a weird time to get a puppy, but it lined up perfectly. Yeah, that's all right. Lots yeah. of time to spend together, I suppose. Yeah, you got a dog, right? I do. Did you bring the dog with you, or did you leave it to, to fend for its own? No, he's here. That'd be kind of cool if there were wild dog packs after this. Dude, we're not far from it, you know, it would seem. Yeah. I, that's, I'm hoping. That's what they're, you're hoping for wild dog packs? I mean, if there's going to be one thing that comes out of this wild, because <laughs> they're not going to be like wild dogs. They're just going to be people's dogs yeah. that have, are now in the wild. <laughs> and like a beagle so leader. Yeah, they're still going to be cool and nice. They're just going to be like approaching you. Yeah. The little packs of cute. Just one one confident beagle is going to be the leader of every <laughs> of every group yeah. of dogs. I'll take some wild dog packs. We got to get some out of this, dude. I studied abroad in Argentina, and I think the one like most interesting thing I saw there. I was there for like six months. I was driving uh, to a train station to go to a different place at like four in the morning, and we saw just a wild street dog pack. And it was the craziest thing I had ever seen. Because I was like, what if there were a child? <laughs> like, what would it do? <laughs> do they all look like, what kind of dogs? Do it, they was all, just, I would, it was just a mix. Same, a mix of dogs. Yeah. Were there like pugs and stuff in there? I didn't see a pug. I definitely saw like a stubby-legged dog. I didn't see the leader, and I wish I could have. Because yeah. I bet it would have been a mismatched leader. Yeah, a fun ragtag team. Yeah, like a Kevin Hart like a Kevin Hart kind of dog. Well, hey. Yeah. I wonder how Argentina is doing. Uh, probably bad. They're bad always. No, they're they're a horrible place. Horrible. Everyone's good. Everyone's doing fine. Yeah, it's fine. I uh, I opened the podcast uh, with a letter from World War One in a trench. Just to, I got to keep reminding myself this isn't terrible, you know? And oh, yeah, there were a bunch of pussies. Yeah, and so, like, I had to open from a trench. This, this kid was saying that he watched uh, 300 of his fellow men get blown away next to him. And uh, I'm like... 300 guys? Yeah. Holy Lord. Yeah. So, uh, well, tell me about yourself. You ever watch that? You ever watch <laughs> something like that? <laughs> uh, no, but I do read those letters to cheer me up. Yeah. I'm the same as you. Yeah. yeah to cheer you up, like, because you like the violence? Are you one of those um, guys? Yeah, I, I really gross. like to. Uh, I like to think of you know what it would be like. I've always, uh, I love war games, Call of Duty, Battlefield. Yeah. That's one thing I wish I had. And I keep thinking about buying an Xbox. Uh, oh shit! You don't have any video games during this? Not one. Just books. that's probably a good thing though. This is a great time to like. I mean, that's what everyone says. Is uh, it's it's a great time to get the work done. You know. Yeah. Have you been All that writing? Stuff that isn't, I have been writing a lot, not as much as I should. Yesterday, I literally just ate buffalo wings. Oh, that's cool though. It's, like, see, like, this is this is this is despair in our time is buffalo wings at home. Yeah, there are days where I can wake up and work, and then there are days where I don't know. You know, when you have that one excuse to not 
to just ruin your day. Yes, I'm an open micer. Of course I know that. Yeah, I've been doing that a lot. A lot of self-sabotage early in the morning. Um, yeah, I'm always looking for a reason to, to be like, I guess I can't. Is it cheering you up to be with your parents, or is it making it worse, or your dad? Dude, it's, it's, it, was, it was fun at first, but it's about to, we're about to lose our minds. Oh, no. My is girlfriend's it... with me, and I'm afraid she's, like, falling out of love with me. <laughs> this has been so much of my family for her. Oh, no. What's, and it's, is it, what's your dad like? Is he like you? Yeah, he likes me. We're good. Yeah. Um, yeah, he likes me. He likes, uh, he's a, he's a staunch Arizonan, okay. a, a conservative Arizonan man with his morals and values that are amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, there's a reason it's with anyone's parents. You don't want to be around too long. Yeah, absolutely I, not. I think this has been the most time we've spent together since I have been in high school and it's. It's been wonderful, and now it's enough, and now we, we need to go yeah. to another place. I think you got solid two weeks at best. I got a solid two weeks with Dad. Yeah. Put in that work, and uh, now I'm gonna. I want to risk the corona to <laughs> to go to go back home. Would you come back home with it? You'd be like, I'm here, dude. <laughs> I me. would. Yeah. It's. Uh, I'm. <laughs> I would. I had a, a hundred and nine fever. I'm driving across the border into Los Angeles <laughs> back to my apartment. Like a bloodborne pathogen, just fucking dude. Absolutely, the desert. Absolutely. And how long have you been in LA? You're you're pretty young, right? I'm 26. Okay, yeah. So you're. I mean, you're especially for how many things you fucking achieved. That makes me so. Pete. Jealous. Pete. So, that makes me. We were watching. My girlfriend and I were watching your your videos and I hate it because I'll watch people's videos and I'll be like, this is funny. And we were actually laughing and that's, oh, dude. that's a change. You know, just what to say. Cause Thanks, I, man. you know, when you watch people and you're like, he's good and you're kind of like, ha ha. And yeah. Yeah. Or I was, when you watch someone and you're relieved cause you're like, this isn't very good. Yeah. I'll be fine. And then I watch, <laughs> I watch people like you who's 26 and I'm almost 30 and I'm like, I'm fucked. I'm I'm F U C C E D because Crip. Um, Boom. Uh, yeah. Do you write for a TV show? I don't write for a TV show. Why? Have you heard of anything? I have not. It's, I I'm sure after this there will be a couple of things. Yeah, I'd uh, love to. Uh, I'd love to write for a TV show. What got Especially you? Especially now. Yeah, me too. What I lost you? all my money, dude. I lost all my shows. Oh shit! Really? Oh yeah. I mean, they got moved, but what that means is Michael's money has been moved. Sure. Actually, it was one of, month. You're on one of my shows. That's still probably. We still on? I don't know. When is it? I can't remember when it was. This yeah, I can't remember the specific date. Probably not. It's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. See. Fuck, it's uh, all right, dude. I've already taken so many. April. So many, uh... April twenty ninth. April twenty ninth. So well, you know, yeah, that. Let's be I optimistic. Think we'll be out of the doom and gloom. Let's be optimistic. Maybe if there Let's are ten optimistic. people in the audience, that'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, what got you into stand up? Um. Ooh, dude, I don't know why this is such a hard question to answer every time I, I fucking I don't know. I was a, uh, like the therapist answer, is probably that I was a, uh, a repressed stepson. Okay. That never got to speak up, and then I wanted to start speaking up. And it went well, and I fell in love with it. Um, but really, I just wanted to like be a rock star and do not have the attention span to learn an instrument. God, I fucking and love I, you. I loved comedians, and that worked that way. You know, open mics were available. Like when I think about starting comedy, I wasn't watching really stand up. Even I was watching like Jim Carrey and movies, and I was yeah. like, that's what I want to do. But where do you do that? You can't even do that anywhere, but yeah. you can go to an open mic and, and do, you know, 10 of those a week. So it just kind of became this, my way of doing anything. And then it became the only thing that I do. And, and now it's, I'm living with a decision that I made when I was like 15, 15? and it's going great and I'm loving it. But, you, you started know, at 15. I made the decision that I wanted to be. Okay. At okay, 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 okay. When I was 15, I didn't get the guts to go, on stage until I was, until like three years later, I think it was 18. Jesus. 
18 or 19. And then I did it like once a month, you know, for like a year. And then after that started, blah, blah, blah. Did you, st- did you start in Arizona? Yeah, I started in Arizona. And you, what, what part of Arizona are you in? Phoenix. Phoenix. Did you, uh, do you know any guys that are out here from Phoenix? Yeah, I know. I should know everyone. Chappelle Lacey. Phoenix is a pretty... Guys. He's not yeah, Phoenix. Chappelle, but... Chappelle was there when I started. Um, Michael Turner just moved out. Okay, yes. I do know Michael. The I Yardley know twins. twins. I know the Yardleys. Jesse Johnson. Don't know Jesse Johnson. Yeah, I do. Yeah. That's... Um, that's all I can think of. So you've been... I mean, but that's a that's an amazing decision to make at 18 years old. You basically grew up as a stand-up comic. Which is like one way to fucking Yeah, that is yeah, when I look back on it now it is cool. Like is all cool. my friends were it's cooler I had so many old did. friends, dude. Yeah. That's the cool thing about it, is you you see Yeah, before stand up, adults were adults. Yeah. And then they became people. Because What's... they were just these guys that I knew. It's the the interesting thing is I think if you can if you can be accepted by the by stand-ups when you're that young yeah. it probably means you're good and so like or you're hanging around because i think most young comics i've met have been like yeah i know what you're thinking i'm 18 so what you know what i mean like if you were yeah i agree yeah i don't know i was always very i always knew adults don't want to talk to kids anyway so i think i did try to play up the maturity level yeah i think that was a good thing to start learning i was never like an annoying teenager around them even when i was a teenager hmm. That's an interesting thing to get. God damn it. I can't even fucking imagine because I was such a pussy uh, until I was like. 26. Oh, I was still a pussy for sure, dude. Did you get bullied in uh, in school? Oh, yeah. Did you really? And then probably did a little bullying, too. Oh, right? OK, <laughs> shit. What was yeah. the worst? G- give uh, you got a story of each. Um, A good bullying, good me being bullied story. Like a defining bullying story. I definitely have one or two. (laughs) Defining bullying story wasn't even from school. It was from my stepbrother. So my dad remarried the third time, and we got a, I got a new stepbrother. I was like 10, and he was 14. So like a 14-year-old to a 10-year-old. I just remember him being like an adult to me. Yeah. And he had like naked ladies on his walls and stuff and just it was a he was the coolest dude yeah. all i wanted to do was impress this guy and he listened to lincoln park and i <laughs> bought lincoln park because he listened to it and i was listening to it and he was like what are you listening to and i said lincoln park and he said oh i don't listen to that anymore because you started listening to it and this was in the car and like my whole family laughed and that like made me sad. And then in the store, he kept making fun of me. And I remember just breaking down and crying in a grocery store because uh, <laughs> my stepbrother was making oh fun God. of me. Oh my God! And it's... I can't even remember really what he was making me fun of me about. But he had like my parents made him apologize, which I was like, that that's worse, you know? Yeah. I don't like the made apology is worse. I just remember it's a very vivid memory that I remember. Why are there those? Why are there the vivid memories of a time when there are no memories? You know what I mean? Isn't that a weird yeah. fucking thing to think about? I don't remember You're right. That's probably the only, the and, only memory I have of that entire year of my life. I yeah. Bet. Every, I remember, I remember a kid calling me fat in front of a girl that I really liked and then, oh, dude. and then poking my belly in front of her and her laughing. Oh my God. Yeah. And then I was like, well, this is my life now. This is, I guess, this is how I'm defined. I remember uh, there was this one girl I had a crush on, and her and her friend were playing Power Rangers or something. And her friend, like, electric shocked her, and she was, like, pretending to get electrified. And I was like, this is my chance to jump in here. And I jumped in front of her, and I went, like, shield. I was like, shield, you know, shielding <laughs> yeah. her. And she, like, pushed me out of the way and said, you're not playing with us. Oh, and my God. Cool. That's one of the most vicious memories of my life, for sure. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Oh, it was Christ. so brutal. And did I you, just went and did sat you have on a rough time with girls? Alone. Oh, yeah, dude. I was terrified of girls. Huh. In the sixth grade, I had, like, ten girlfriends. And then after that, I didn't talk to girls for, like, a decade. Wow. What was, yeah. the, what was the trigger? Did one of them... I think everyone in the sixth grade was just kind of dating each other. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd, like, meet for a week, say I love you, and then break up. And I did a lot of that. And then afterwards, when it started, 
I don't know when maybe relationships started getting real. I uh, I started playing World of Warcraft too. That didn't help at all. Okay. Okay. Now we get. I spent a lot of time on that. Yeah. Did you Did you dive deep into video games for a long time? Totally. Really? That was all I did. Yeah. What's, all I did. What's the I mindset of that? Do. Really? So you're just you're just thinking about that all the fucking time. Oh yeah. I'd wake up during summer, like if there's no school, I would just wake up and play World of Warcraft and go to sleep. Jesus. I think if I type slash played, you could type slash played on the game and it shows you how many like hours and days you've logged into it. And a cumulative hours, it said that I had like uh, like 90 days oh my sitting in God. front of the computer. Yeah, dude, it's a vicious. Why is there something so much worse about sitting in front of a computer than sitting in front of a television? I don't know why that's such a sad image as compared You're to right. Because they're both, yeah, you know, they're both it sad. It seems to be like, yeah, and the people that sit in front of computers, it looks like the computer is taking life away from them. Yeah. Like, they don't, they get, they start not shaving, and they get uh, chubbier, and just all the, all this, I was also a chubby kid for, like, a couple of years. Were I you think, really? Uh, oh, yeah, I think surprising. everyone should go through that. I think people I like, people assume I'm an asshole uh, for whatever reason. I guess because I because I decided to take away my white privilege and tattoo my neck, and uh, which was a very smart decision that I do not regret. <laughs> and uh, I I think, that's what I've heard about everyone with the neck tattoo. They're always like, I stand by this. Uh, well, I have to, or else I what what am I gonna do? Fucking take it off. True. Um, and uh, so people expect me to be an asshole. Kelly Ryan she said that she thought. I was going to be an asshole until the first time she talked to me. And then she was like, oh. That's funny, dude. Yeah. It is hard to not see the neck tattoo. Mm -hmm. And at least think, like, this dude's hardcore or something. Or, so or this conversation bird. won't be normal. Yeah. You yeah. know? And that's not right. It's No, it's absolutely right. Because for the most <laughs> part, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, like, People with tattoos are not a marginalized group. They decided to fuck up their lives. And so yeah. it's like, for me, I get on stage and I have to prove to people that I'm funny and then they can decide whether or not they laugh at me. And same with other comics. Like, they can decide. But, like, it took a minute. Like, I think a lot of them looked at me and they were like, this fucking douchebag. Like, he's going to come in here and fucking... <laughs> I think most comics collectively thought that at first. And maybe yeah. think that still. But I seem to have made friends it seems like we it seems like you and i made friends pretty quick yeah dude i think we click huh how about that we've only Thanks we've for, only uh, yeah we've only met once or twice warm and 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 nice to me yeah i am warm that's all it takes yeah i you I, i've seen you on stage several times and i always have that too time. yeah also you're funny that's the big three right oh you've seen me uh you've seen me do stand up i don't think i've even i don't know if i've seen you on stage but I know we've been at the same mics several times. Yeah, I think there's just also that mutual. I see that people I like like you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I'm like, well, he must be funny. Yeah, I uh, I usually like. Uh, there was a time where I probably would have been intimidated by the fact that you're funny because you stand out, and like you're really, a, you're a stand like you did that bit about your dog at the improv mic at like 11:30, and people were fucking oh, dude. dying. Yeah, but do you know the other thing about me? Like, I avoided that fucking mic for like three years the improv mic yeah well because it I, seems like you you kind of seem like you're a part of that i don't I, I guess i could call it a fringe of people like you and amy silverberg and uh uh brad Silnitzer, who i think should be passed at every club like i i when i see you guys go up i'm like how are they how are these and then i remember it's not that's not what it's all about but yeah, it's also it's surprising mean. um but i, I know mean, you mean you know, yeah, definitely. Because it seems like that's, you're you're far above the rest, and so it's uh, you know. That's the cool thing about the clubs because I used to. I, used to, I like that though about the clubs, like it. They really don't give a fuck. It's an equalizer. If you've had yeah, if you've had success somewhere, you fucking like I called my manager after the NBC thing and was like, hey, is there a maybe like a bridge that we can build? with the uh you know the improv or something is there any relationship we can start making and she's like well have you done the open mic and i'm like all right i'll just i'll hang up of course yeah do there's Which, no way around it i kind of i kind of like that in a in a world where people are uh, like not not saying you i'm saying a lot of people who have social media followers and things like that 
they have the ability to skip the line in a lot of ways. Yes. The yes. great equalizer is you have to go sit at this cattle call and then you have to make a group of comics who's been sitting there for four hours laugh. Dude, you have to do a showcase in front of a hundred comedians, which yeah. nothing sounds, nothing's worse than a showcase. Not and then the audience is all comics. Yeah. But then I did it and it was great. And I've actually made tons of friends just from going to that. Yeah. Thing it's once a great mic. In it's a year. Yeah. It's a great mic because it's just everybody is there eating the shit sandwich together. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, you know, are doing the work somewhere, then it should come across very quickly and it shouldn't be a, a long, difficult thing with yeah. the clubs. Yeah. But yeah. How was, uh, did you enjoy the bring the funny experience? Um, I love that I got to do it and it helped me get on the road and stuff. I don't know if I enjoy doing co comedy in a contest yeah. way. You could argue that, you know, it's always a contest and stuff like I that. Never like an actual, that. Yeah. an actual rigid contest format is very stressful. Especially so, because the only comic up there was just Jeff Foxworthy. That's true. Yeah, there was that. I wasn't worried about that, though. I liked that Chrissy Teigen was up there. I was like, I bet I can get her to like me. Yeah, you seemed to have no problem. You had them in stitches. I just did my stuff, dude. Yeah. I was nervous about the the stuff that wasn't the stand-up. You had to do a bunch of, like, sketches and who are you is kind of introductory stuff. Oh, shit. I was really nervous about that coming out, but it, it seemed to come out fine. They didn't make me look bad. But yeah, I don't know. That's a that was an experience that it was like hellish. The day, the shooting day was hellish. It was very long and tons of nerves and just waiting. And it was fucking cold. I remember. Mm. I just remember it was so physically cold in the studios. But obviously, I would do it again, and and I'm happy that I got to do it. Like I'll do anything to. I just want people to see my fucking comedy, man. Yeah, I agree with you. you. Know? I like you do I it. I like comics who act like they're above stuff like that because it's like, really, you're gonna no. say no? Okay, have dude, I'm, I'm in the say yes to everything position. Thank you, NBC's Bring the Funny. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't mean I had to fucking enjoy doing it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, they can't make you enjoy do that. There's no one on this planet that should enjoy doing that process. It's it's got to be bizarre. It has to be just by its formula. Everyone yeah. there was wonderful to work with. They made it as good as it could be, but you can't make that fun. Yeah, uh, and comedy is a marketable product, so why are they, why would they not fucking try to market it? So I'm gonna go. True. I'll go positive, and then we'll go a little bit negative. All right. Sounds good, man. So tell me what your so far. Uh, you can name more than one, but what's in your head your biggest accomplishment to date? I think the Conan. Yeah. Just because that's like, maybe that's just because I'm a comedian. I don't think that's the accomplishment that's helped me the most. Yeah. But for me, it was like, that was that was almost all I wanted to do when for I sure. left Arizona. I was yeah. like, I want to do a late night set. Uh, and yeah, it was like, a, it was the one thing I've done that was cooler than I thought it would be. Hmm. Describe, the, Everything. describe that trajectory and the night. The trajectory of like how I got it. Yeah. Um, I got it from I did the Laughing Skull Comedy Festival, and some people there saw me, and then like a year went by, and I did the New York Comedy Festival, and some people there saw me again, and then I uh, did the Damn Conan a few months after that. It's so a really boring crazy. trajectory, but. It seems like yeah. that's how it always is. It seems like it just kind of happens. It did. It just kind of happened. Some people liked me that, I don't know, I guess, I don't know. I did, uh, the Laughing Skull was a contest when I did it. It's not anymore. But I, I was able to finish in, like, the top few. So that helped a lot, I bet. Yeah. And then, uh. Yeah, and then they did the TBS Comics to Watch thing, and then we all went to New York, did this showcase at Caroline's, and then uh, crazy. some of us got to, it was nuts. That was almost the coolest part, Yeah, was just going to New York and doing that showcase for, like, some big dogs. 
and you know there's all these like jeff ross is hosting and stuff just yeah. a cool cool little night but yeah that was the i don't know i feel like everything's disappointing especially in this business but that was the one thing that was cooler than i thought it would be what was so cool about it it was just everything about it dude the car picking me up the how easy it was to get like my family in for them to all see uh how nice everybody was how cool conan was how he actually like was cool yeah and then how good the show was like it didn't feel like a weird stiff tv set it so felt it like a great room immediately yeah it just everything went everything went well it was a great set i we actually just watched it a couple hours ago well thank you man yeah yeah and you were 24 years old when you did that 24 that's so fucking crazy dude that's so nuts yeah, dude, that was wild. Yeah. I was I was definitely nervous. I was shaking, but right, it so was good. It went away when I, you so know, you got you to go do out it. there. Yeah, that's fucking, did, uh, were you extremely nervous before? Yeah, very nervous. Who was the guest? The guest was Martin Short. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so and you then... got to do comedy in front of Martin <laughs> Short, too. Yeah, dude, oh, Martin Short God. was there, and then fucking Sean Penn was there, too. Holy fuck. Fuck. And uh, he leaned into my room, I guess, after my, my set and said, hey, man, great set. But I was like talking to other people. I didn't hear him. And yeah. he left. So That's, I ignored Sean Penn. He was one of my uh, one of my favorite actors when I was a kid. Dude, was come Sean on. Penn. Spumoni or whatever his name Spicoli. was. Holy, I have a picture Spicoli, of him in my yeah. bathroom. <laughs> I have Holy. I literally have a framed photo of him in my bathroom. <laughs> fucking ignored spicoli spicoli dude and which is kind of cool because he beat up his wife so um but... <laughs> yeah i guess so this was post that yes yes it was back then he was a sweet stoner and now he's uh you know but he also <laughs> donates shit it's a conflict it's a we fucking... it's a conflict <laughs> yeah uh he's in haiti doing shit um t- so uh with all the it seems like you're hitting a lot of marks of of positivity that I am assuming didn't come without shitty times. Um, yeah, you know how it is. For sure. What was you're the, in? I'm, I'm in the shitty times right now, as we speak in comedy. I'm I'm just barely getting some bones thrown to me, but they're like microscopic and unmeasurable by anybody except myself and other comics, you know. Uh, and so, like you, just like how Conan, like I'm sure you were like you weren't like this is gonna change everything, but it was like such a milestone in your head. That you're yeah. like, now I get to say I did that, and it gives you the confidence to just go do other shit. Yeah, um, it was. A, I mean, we're such, like, we, I think we as comics hold value in a lot of the wrong things. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Not to not to say that's, like, a really bad thing. I just think that's the way we are. So, yeah, it was definitely a huge part of Conan was feeling that I wasn't a fraud or something. You know, just to push in the right direction. Yeah. But that's a huge fucking validation. And then a bunch of people got to know your name. Same with the NBC thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. I mean, there were good comics that passed through that shit. It wasn't it wasn't any like shit comics. It was like good, good names. that were. Yeah. That's why that's what made me want to do it was mostly the other people that were doing it. When I saw like Jesus was doing it, I thought, oh, this will be good. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is like one of the darkest times in your life? Not even, it doesn't have to be comedy related. It could be comedy related, but there could be multiple. Um, I would say the first year I moved to LA was probably the darkest year of my life. That was wild. I don't, uh, it was just, I, I moved alone. I didn't know anybody Mm -hmm. except for some bigger comics that I'd opened for that, always tell you to hit them up when you get out there, but you never do, you know? And, uh, I was just Which is uh, smart that you don't. That's smart. Yeah, it is. Because, I think because so. they can't, they can't help you. So it's, I don't know. I've gone both ways on it. I've had friends that have done it and it's worked out. And so I, I, I wish I did. I wish I reached a little more of a balance. Yeah. I wish I wasn't so insistent that like, I have to not ask anyone for help and stuff. Cause there were a couple of people that of course helped. Yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, I was just really alone. I had no friends. Uh, I wouldn't speak all day until I went to an open mic. Oh man! And then I would like bomb in an open mic and go home uh, alone. It was just a period of being alone for like eight months and not really connecting with anyone. Not really. 
I don't know, kind of just floating and wondering and a lot of isolation. Uh, I started drinking wine alone, <laughs> lone bottles of wine. <laughs> what kind of wine? Yeah, any kind of wine. Red. What, what goes through your head when you're drinking wine? Do you feel sexy or do you just feel more sad? I would feel good. Yeah. I'd feel happy. And so then I'd keep drinking it and then I'd feel, you know, the next day would be ruined. When I and was, was when I was an alcoholic, worse. when I was an alcoholic, I would drink wine because I was like, "This is more refined," and that I'd drink a a box of wine. Oh yeah, it feels classier and stuff. So <laughs> yeah, my mom's my mom's a successful lady. She's drinking the wine, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, yeah, just a very lonely, bad time. Nothing. I mean, I don't have like any crazy rock bottoms. Sure. I think that's enough of a rock bottom in a mental sense, you know, because that's a definitely fucking... in a mental sense. Yeah. Yeah. What's Counting the, most... the. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. What's up? What's the worst bomb you've ever had? Um, I was in. Oh, no, it's bad. If you I can remember this, it that I quickly. took this dude back in Arizona. All right. So we start, I've been doing it maybe two years. Uh, this one guy in Arizona says he's like, I've got a bus. I'll book a bunch of shows from here to Canada. We'll we'll go on the road for like a month in this bus and do all these shows. And to 19 year old Michael, that sounds amazing. You know, I'm this like, is something yeah. you're opening for. No, this is just a local guy. Just a dude. Just met him like oh, two nights no. ago. Okay. And, but my friend Mason was also down. So I was like, Mason's going with this, you know, this guy. And then another guy, it was four of us in this tiny little hippie van. And, uh, two days into the trip, we realized like, that we it was a horrible mistake we fucking hated each other already and we like already got into fights and couldn't stand the way we were like someone would sneeze and it'd be like shut the fuck up it was just the worst the worst we all needed to jerk off that was the biggest thing dude oh, no. we would get into a city and we'd look at each other just like i don't want to see any of you until we have to do this show tonight and then we'd all just go off somewhere and find a place to jerk off that was the entire <laughs> trip for a month starbucks bathrooms were huge for me but we <laughs> got to santa coffee Cruz. while you're fucking coming dude i mean it would be like by the time i would have to do it all i would have to do was look at it and it would be very it was very quick <laughs> very quick operation faster than going you know than peeing and to this day you make your girlfriend hold like a French roast underneath your nose while you're. Well, you know, your stuff's your stuff. Everyone's got their stuff. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to slut shame. I. <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> um. So we got into Santa Cruz. Never been there. Beautiful. And we're at this place called the Crow's Nest or something. And I'm hosting the show. And I used to do this dumb hacky joke about Amber Alerts. Typical 19 year old kind of edgy joke. And. uh the day before, I guess, there had been a kidnapping and they didn't release an Amber Alert. And that morning they found the the little girl's body. Oh, no. And so everyone was talking about Amber Alerts, like, why didn't they release one? That's why this, this happened. And I go up there and I do my, it's going great for like five minutes. And then I do my Amber Alert joke and you just hear, it, you can just, you know, you feel the audience desert you. Fuck. You know, just completely pull the air out of the room. And this biker dude with like tattoos on his face stood up and he was like, get off the stage, you loser. He called me a loser, which I remember very well because I was like, that is like, it's not vulgar. And he could have said anything. So but to he the held, point. So he to held the point. back enough yeah. to like, yeah, say something very personal, like you're a loser. Um, and I, uh, I was hosting too. So I had to like, keep going up there <laughs> and it was terrible dude, people thought that i had heard about the thing and decided to make the joke oh no Fuck. Uh, yeah it was just the worst and that that's not like a bomb for like a i walked into that one it wasn't my fault you know i didn't know yeah it's not a great joke the joke i was doing but it definitely doesn't have that reaction usually no no, I would assume that under normal circumstances, having you doing a show, I, I'm assuming you thought it worked. Yeah, I wouldn't do it to, like, fucking be edgy, you know? That's, uh, 
That's but yeah, a... people wanted to like hurt me. There was there was a threat of violence. That's like a nightmare scenario. That's like it was. that's the worst. That's fucking horrible. Yeah, rest of the show wasn't very good. No one really no one really got him back. But it's here's the thing is I mean, how are my listeners going to react when they hear that you advocate for child murder? And I have to think about that. My camera died, so luckily they can't see your face. Oh, really? Is that true? Yeah. Well, I don't advocate for child murder. <laughs> um, I am for a strict punishment. I think we've gone soft in the way of, of punishing our children. Yes. So I'm all, I'm all for that, but I think murder is a bit over the top. And folks, I don't do the Amber Alert joke anymore. It's hacky <laughs> anyways. Aside from the horribleness <laughs> of it, I did not know about this. But yeah, maybe check out the headlines for sure if That's, you roll into a new town. That, but how would that. you have known? How <laughs> the fuck would Dude. you have known? That's what I thought. Half some people did know that too. They were like, "Nothing you can do there." Huh? Yeah, you really for sure. Into that one. Yeah. And then other people, there were a, a alarming amount of people that thought that this kid was. People are insane. looking for a reason to be mad a lot of the time. Yeah. And, yeah. And you did you. Santa Cruz I gave was reeling. I sent him a real good reason. <laughs> that's so fucking terrible. Uh, what's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? Most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. One time at summer camp, I put my boxers on the wrong way, so the hole was facing my butt. <laughs> and my pants fell down for some reason, and everyone saw that I put my boxers on the wrong way, so like they could see my butt through my wiener hole or whatever it's called <laughs> i don't know that's the most embarrassing <laughs> moment of my life but if i get i remember that so well dude some kid being like his boxers are on the wrong way <laughs> how, <laughs> how old were you dude so brutal how old so were you brutal. i was like that was like 11 maybe why, 11 12 why is that the most embarrassing thing as a kid to be called out for anything like to have somebody draw attention to you is dude, like oh kid, god I think that's why a lot of kids bully because they're just happy it's not them. Yeah, that's fair. They're like, God, it's oh, like, yeah, it's like, we're making fun of this kid. Thank God it's not me. Thank Christ. Dude, I remember yeah. I was in the locker room one time in seventh grade and I was changing. And this kid, Nick, who was like a tough guy, uh, he was one of those tough guys. He um, fucking, he looked at me and was like holding court with people and then... I turned and I looked at him and he goes, what fatty? I'll poke your belly. And I was just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and then everybody just <laughs> laughed at me. And then now I was the kid that they were paying attention to. And then everybody, oh, everybody had to like run their shitty open mic joke at me. So everybody's like, yeah, he's so fat that fucking he can't <laughs> see his dick. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> They're right. <laughs> yeah. How long were you fat for when you were a kid? Long time. Uh, Long time. I was fat, and then I was uncomfortable with my body up until, uh, I mean, fuck, probably two, two to one year ago. You know what I mean? Dude, me too. No, I have, I have body issues for I've, sure. I've continued to have body issues. Yeah, it's been, it's been yeah. terrible. Did you ever have like uh, eating aversions or yeah, anything? Yeah, I did. I, I was anorexic for like a. Really. That was how I. That was how I originally got out of my chubby. I started playing pop Warner football and not eating at all. No way. I don't mean to, like, trauma bond with you, as they say. No. I was bulimic for a long time. Yeah? Yeah. And that was, like, a big thing. Uh, yeah. Up until probably six or seven months ago. Oh, uh, really? To when it well, completely stopped. Thank you so much. I know much. that that is, like, a very difficult... I don't know if I should... My, I have family that is very, like, extremely... Has dominated their life. Yeah, mine too. Much. I have, a, yeah. I have a close family member, same thing. And I never thought it could happen to me, and then it did, you know? Yeah. It was very weird. I got out of it. I was just kind of, I mean, it's still like, I still have everything I eat, I think about 20,000 times before yeah. I eat it. So that still goes on, but I eat it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for a while there, I just uh, did not eat for about a, like a year. Jesus. Or I would eat like oatmeal once a day. Yeah. Did you, did you, uh, do you work out or anything like that? Yeah. I hike and I do the push ups and stuff. You seem like uh, a hike and push up guy. You don't like, you look like, I would have never guessed you were fat because you look like you maintain, but you don't look like you fucking go nuts. I got lucky and I hit a growth spurt and then it, now it's kind of, I'm a little spoiled. 
where I can, my girlfriend hates it. Like I'll eat whatever I want my and wake up that. having yeah. lost weight. So it's pretty easy to maintain these days. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, uh, I like to work out. I got to work out once a day. Yeah, me too. I've Gotta been, do my I've been doing it and it's, it's been, that's, this is the only thing keeping me alive is podcasting and fucking going to do really tough workouts outside. Yeah, definitely. Been, Hiking is good. Hiking is good during these times. I'm going to come out with a prison body. I'm going to fucking have a prison body to go with these yeah. prison tattoos. You were, what, what struck, what like kind of triggered the anorexia? Um, I think there was a lot of general shame just within the family. There was always a, I always remember trying to be in best shape for like these annual family reunions every year because there would always be the grandparents and aunts and uncles saying, oh, he's getting chubby and, or, oh, they're, it wouldn't matter. Like you're either too skinny or you're too chubby. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you're just trying to impress these people who, who look like shit, so by the bad. way. Yeah, they you know? look like shit. Yeah. That was probably it a lot. It was mostly just family stuff. I don't think there was ever like a no one was really mean to me at school about it that much hmm. you got lucky i was like fucking mine was the I opposite so. mine was the opposite because my family was definitely worried about me like my mom was worried about me getting diabetes um but then uh, at school it was just endless like it happened all the fucking time it was yeah. terrible yeah oh there's a video of me on youtube at 12 years old as a chubby little kid uh and I'm like, I'm, I, I'm just acting crazy in it or whatever. And it was uploaded like 12 years ago. Yeah. And it had like five views. And then I got Conan and everyone, people looked up my name and now it has like 5,000 views. This fucking oh my dumb God. little video of Chubby Michael. I think I like yell at a girl <laughs> to get out of my shot or something. The video is kid goes crazy. Like I think it's, that's what it's called. Because that's a kid thing to that's pretty amazing yeah i guess so but it's getting more and more views as the days go by dude i used to have teachers call me fat i had whoa i have a bit about it where like a teacher called me pudgy pete for like a whole year and that was a real thing dude that'll be enough to ruin you for the rest of your life for sure and she was like the bit is it's funny because it didn't even work out as like like i didn't have to write it it was just it was she was a social studies teacher like she wasn't my my PE teacher. She would just call me Pudgy Pete, and I was like, yeah. "What does this have to do with the population of fucking of Malaysia? What's going on? Like, why do you That's need to bully me?" That's pretty brutal. Yeah, uh, That's pretty brutal. And it didn't even carry over to the students. I think even the students were like, "That's fucked up. That's a fucked up thing to do." And then they would just bully me independently. <laughs> they would be like, "Sorry hey man, about." I don't, I don't really. I don't really like what she's doing in there, but you know, you do look, you could run a little bit. You look like shit. Uh, but Mrs. <laughs> but fucking Mrs. Wynn is, is really pushing the envelope and I don't like it. And I just want you to know that I support you, but also you're fat. So, uh, yeah, dude, I'm going to be so cautious of what I say if I have kids for sure. Yeah. Um, cause I remember, I mean, I, I think it only takes like one or two times Yeah. for me. It feels, I can only remember like one or two times that, family members would be like he's getting pudgy and that just changed the shape of my next five years i think if somebody said that to me now that's my biggest like one of my biggest fears is if somebody were to be like you're fat i'd be like well now i'm spiraling now <laughs> now and comedy is on hold until i can fucking yeah be on a feeding tube emotions. yeah uh -huh. god that's so fucking crazy um we're at like 43 minutes i think this is I'm trying to think of one more parting question. How are you staying positive? That's a good one. That's what I've been doing. How am I staying positive? Um, you be fucking. You got that hairline. It's a yeah, solid, I'd be it's fucking. A, you know, I have. A, I got a girlfriend, and we do engage physically. Yeah, a few times, a few times a week. Did your dad root you on from the next room. He's like, "That's that a boy." <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a little weird. You dinner, know? dinner, and dinner and five. <laughs> He would do that. He did, that is his sense. He would like that. But no, we've been pretty quiet uh, while we're here. Um, how do we stay positive? Wow. I'm not positive a lot. Yeah, me neither. Um, so I, that's, why, that's why I ask because it's just an Yeah, I think time. my girlfriend helps me stay positive. I think she sees me the way I would like to see me. But, you know, it's like even when you do a great set, 
I can still come off stage and be like, no, that wasn't a great set. Or you would think that's a great set because you don't know what, you know, I know what I could have done. Yeah. There's always, I'm tearing myself down constantly. I guess I do feel very lucky though. I am very, I feel very grateful. I realize that it's, all I wanted to do was move out of Arizona and be in the comedy world. And so if that's all I wanted to do, then I, I shouldn't be pretty happy. Yeah. You know, I, I do definitely count my blessings and feel fortunate. So that helps just taking a chill pill and being like, dude, you fucking, you're fine. You thought you were going to dig ditches. You yeah. Know? That's... At least we're not doing that. I, I thought, thought I was, I was gonna... the dumbest fucking kid, dude. I thought dude, I was me too. stupid as fuck. Yeah. I was really, I would cry during math homework. So oh, fuck. We, me too. That hit hard. Me, like oh 17 God. years old, like telling my mom, you made a stupid kid, oh, you know, man. Fucking just sad stuff. Dude, in college, and, I remember I couldn't pass algebra because I was just like, this doesn't, it makes me so mad because yeah. I have to oh, sit dude, and just so mad. Yeah. And I just, it just wouldn't register. Like I could what did I do. I did something a couple of weeks ago that felt like doing math homework. Like I hadn't challenged my mind yeah. in that way for so long. And I, got enraged so in it might have been studying sides or something yeah like it was just like too much i kept fucking it up and it started to like feel the little lip quiver coming i was like Dude. all right chill out we're not crying over it, this stuff anymore but. it's so weird how it feels like this just like i still have i have nightmares about high school still because like i would that would be my worst thing in the world is if i had to go back to high school like, Dude, oh, I have yeah. worries that I still do things to impress someone in high school that hasn't thought of me in years. Wow. You know? I, I have to, like, check in with myself and be like, why are we, what is our true intention behind this? Oh, fuck. Is it for us or is it for some dumb reason that... Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. That kind of hit me right in the fucking <laughs> sorry dude right in the I mean hole the fucking... yeah, see, I knew I knew we clicked man yeah was, oh know. my god dude the math homework and the fucking I remember being in I could not pass pre-algebra in high school until I was a junior and dude no it, I'm right there with you it was so hard because I just didn't want to sit but then I could write papers like a motherfucker yeah dude English was that's what and that's what my mom would always say it was like oh you're 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 a words boy yeah which is Whatever. yeah which is like you're autistic but that's fine <laughs> yeah i really yeah, thought i, I could be autistic for a on, long time i was always counting on the fact that i was good at writing but i was also counting on that before i knew that i was good at writing you know yeah i was just i just decided oh if i'm bad at math i must be good at words yeah I you know? really, I really hope I get the opportunity to to write more than jokes one day. Also, like on something or for something. I yeah, think, I think that would be the coolest. Dude, I love writing. Yeah, me too. I mean, that's and that was another reason I got into stand up was we would do these writing prompts in this English class I had, and it was like the first chance I had to almost perform. You know, you'd have mm -hmm. to write one every day and read it to the class, and it was. I started like messing around with them and even to where people would know that like when it came around to me, it was going to be some weird, ridiculous answer. And that was exciting. Oh, and cool. I also, I remember that was, those were my first laughs too. I think. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's cool. I, I had such bad uh, performance and social anxiety that I couldn't read stuff out loud. That was another thing too, was it was, I same with me. I still shake before uh, going on stage sometimes. Oh, yeah. It always goes away when I go on there, but it can definitely, like, yeah, the nerves, I don't know. I don't know when they go away or if they ever do. I don't think, I think once they do, you know uh, it's not. You're not into it anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. the fact that, but also, like, I like the positive spin that maybe is a fucked up stand-up way to look at it of you, like, constantly hounding yourself. Like, it shouldn't be to the extent that, because I identify with that too. I feel like the same way, and my girlfriend tries to do the same thing for me. But I feel like the constant hounding is what's going to make you good. And so it's like, yeah. I try to listen to it to an extent, but just to the point where it's healthy. Where it's like, yes, keep writing. And maybe that joke does suck in your head. And once, but like everybody thinks it's funny. So maybe keep fucking with it until you think it. You know what I mean? It just keeps pushing yeah. you. Yeah, I don't let myself uh, bully myself anymore. Yeah. 
that's been my own uh, pretty much biggest improvement. Yeah, I I've I've tried to make that turnaround, especially in the last couple of months. I did a bunch of shows in Europe, and I fucked. Yeah, up. I had to just be like, I'm good, uh, and and like I had to get on. Yeah, stage. I'm good. I deserve to be here. Yeah, you have put in the work. You know. Yeah. Yeah, putting in the that's yeah that's the only. If there's anything I know that I do, it's a shit ton of stand up. Yeah, yeah, same here. You yeah. know where I, at least I know when I go on, I'm like I at least worked as hard as everyone else in here probably at this yeah well i think so you're I, I think you're very fucking good and it's all paying off i'm sorry to suck your dick a couple more times but dude thank you man it's no you're really fucking funny and from the like the first time i saw you i was very you're you're very unique you got a very unique style and uh, like everything about you, you know your demeanor and your fucking there's very few people who stand out because there's so many of us so it's it's right. very you know I you're uh you know keep going doing the thing and fucking we're all gonna suck when we get back so um, Pete dude I appreciate that so much same to you man thanks man hey thanks for being on I really uh really appreciate it I hope you had fun and, yeah man I hope uh, I hope this was good I always get in my head about about these, no it was but great I, yeah I was I, so boring for a while no not at all I always I I always wonder if I'm talking too much so no we can, all right well let me also just say uh. NBC's Bring the Funny. Thank you again. Love you guys. I always worry that if I, like, if I trash someone who provided opportunity for me, like, there's no, nothing worse. It didn't come that, off right? like you were trashing at all. No, yeah. Please yeah. let me reiterate. It was amazing. Just yeah. the natural way of it was is stressful. Absolutely. No one's fault. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I'm going to post this in like an hour. All right. Yeah. Dude, so that's cool. If you want to repost, you can. If not, we're we're not friends anymore. And I'll give you a, I'll give you some promo for sure, but uh a job would be nice too in this in these trying times. If you get yeah, a writing, well, if you I'm get not. a writing room job, if you get a writing room job, I would assume that as best friends now <laughs> that we fucking Of course. <laughs> Right. You and the twenty three other people that have told me that, I think. Yeah. No, fuck it. I've got no. I've got like an army in Arizona that's oh, pretty God. much just like when you when you make it, man, let us know, we'll move out. Please we'll start. please take me out of that category as I was kidding. <laughs> I was fucking kidding. No. Uh well when you're uh when you're back, well hopefully we get to work together soon and uh I wish you the best and, and stay healthy. Dude, yeah. I hope we're uh I hope our show is uh I hope the corona's calmed down by then and yeah. That has no complications. Otherwise, dude, stay stay healthy, and yeah, I'll man. see you when this all when this all blows over. All right, buddy. Uh, all right. Give the family my love. I know that they miss me, and and uh, you know all that. Of shit. course. All right. They'll dude. be happy to hear from Uncle Pete. Goddamn right they will be. All right, buddy. Hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Of course, man. Later. Later Thank dude. you. Have a good day. That was Michael Longfellow. Uh, if you uh, would like to go follow him, please do. He was on NBC's Bring the Funny, like he said. Uh, and his Instagram handle is Longfellow, L-O-N-G-F-E-L-L-O, under slash Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Very, very funny. Like, super funny to the point where it makes me angry. Um Go watch his, uh, his videos on YouTube. A lot of his uh, sets are on YouTube. His Conan set is Bring the Funny. I think the first set is on there. Um, if you get a chance to see him in a town near you when he's on the road, back on the road after this whole fiasco, please do so. Please go follow him. And thank you all for listening. Everybody stay safe. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Bye.